Hey guys, in this After Effects tutorial I'll show you how to animate graphic shapes so that they bounce naturally. It is very important for a good animation to give its elements a unique character and a certain behavior. Let's dive in. We start with creating a half tube. We take an ellipse shape layer, position the anchor point in the middle, convert it into a Bessier path, erase the upper point, and try to fix these handles to get to a straight horizontal line. Now let's change the color. Of course we always name the layer and also give it a label color to keep some sort of overview. We grab the layer and move it down to the bottom. Let's continue with the cube. We create a square shape. Maybe scale it down a little. Around 250 pixels should be good. Of course we name that layer as well. Let's rotate the cube a little, around 3 degrees. The right corner of the cube will hit the tube almost in the middle. So we set two keyframes for the position and rotation. Then move back to frame 0 of the timeline and set the position for the beginning of the fall and set the rotation to 0. After the cube hits the tube, it will bounce back up and rotate in the other direction. Okay, we jump forward 5 frames and move up a little and set the rotation to minus 8 degrees. Now we move forward 4 frames and move the cube back down again. The tube, of course, cannot hold the weight of the cube and so the left side goes down with the cube. This is basically a bit of frame by frame animation. Once the cube hits the ground, it falls over. So we change the rotation to minus 90 degrees, move it to the left. And then around 12 frames later, the cube comes to a standstill. To avoid weird movements, we set the keyframe interpolation to linear for now. Alright, not bad, but let's work on the timing a little. We move the keyframes around until we think the animation feels right. There's no trick behind those bounces, it's rather about imitating physical behaviors in real life. Maybe like that. After the cube fell off the tube, it swings back into the other direction. So let's set the rotation to around 30 degrees and shift the position to the right a bit, taking care that the two shapes don't overlap. Around 6 frames later, the rotation changed into minus 20 degrees and the position moved a bit to the left. So with each swing, the values will decrease until we reach the original position. And the distance between the keyframes increases because we want the movement to slow down. Let's set the last keyframes to easy ease in, adjust the curves a little bit and add easy ease to the other ones. Now let's make the shapes a little prettier. We change the color of the cube into blue. Next we want to give the cube a color gradient and a texture, as well as a graphic pattern. Let's duplicate the cube, delete all keyframes, parent it to the cube, by the way name the layer, then make the color a bit darker. We create a new mask and give it a round shape by using the Convert Vertex tool. Then we add a feather of about 125 pixels. We drag the noise effect into our effect controls window and set the amount of noise to 25. Finally, we set the layer to multiply mode. Pretty! Let's add a graphic pattern. We take the pen tool and draw a path, some sort of snake. Adjust it a little. Then we click off the fill because we don't need it. We blow up the stroke to around 13 pixels. Let's add a repeater to the shape by opening the Add menu and selecting Repeater. Three copies is fine.
Don't forget to name that shape layer. We need to pattern it to the cube layer so that it follows all movements. Now we need the pattern to be visible just on the cube. Therefore, we use the set matte effect, apply it to the layer and use the cube layer as mask. What a nice cube it is! Now let's add a gradient to the half tube. We copy the layer and delete all keyframes before we parent it to the layer below. Of course we name it correctly. We darken the color a little and create a new mask. Then create a round shape by dragging the handles and add a feather of 125 frames. Now we add the noise effect again. And set the mode to multiply. Done. Just realized, maybe the cube falls a bit too slow. I'll speed it up a bit. Nice and bouncy. Let's create another element that behaves differently, a floppy cylinder called floppy. <laughs> we use the path tool and create two points. This path will be the cylinder. Name the layer, then we blow up the stroke to 136 pixels. Let's change the color to orange. By opening the shape menu stroke, we give it a round cap. In order to keep the bottom straight, we add another point and move the lower point up a little bit. And adjust the length again. Now we're adding a gradient and noise like before to the other elements. This time, we take the screen mode instead of multiply because it looks better. The cylinder falls from above onto the cube, meaning we have to animate the position. I just see we forgot to parent the path of the gradient layer to the path of the floppy layer. Okay now, let's animate. When hitting the cube, the cylinder will shrink down a little and bend to the right. We adjust the bending by dragging the handles a little. Around 10 frames later, it will rise back up a little and bend to the left. Another 10 frames later, it has its original form again. Let's move the cylinder behind the cube to hide the lower end. Mm. Let's work on the keyframes. Add easy ease to the keyframes and insert two more bends. I also pushed the keyframes far more apart to slow the moves down and adjusted the speed graph. Not too bad. Time for a bow. An ellipse shape layer, no stroke in this case. Anchor point in the middle. Maybe not that big, let's scale it down to 250 pixels. And let's change the color. Name the layer. The bowl is going to hit the tube on the right corner. Let's set two position keyframes, not too far apart, the bowl falls pretty fast. Then it bounces back up and lands on the floor before it crashes into the wall. We adjust the motion path by dragging these handles and make nice curves out of it.
in the moment the ball hits the tube, it's going to swing again. We add two keyframes in that moment and delete the other two ones. Then we move five frames forward and set the rotation to 63 degrees and move the tube to the left so that it touches the cube. The cube is hit by the tube and also moves to the left. So we set two keyframes. Position would be enough in this case. And eight frames later, move the position to the left. Oh, we need to pair in the floppy cylinder to the cube as it should move together with it. Here we go. Let's add easy ease in to the keyframe and adjust it a little. Not too late, let's move it. Now we have to adjust the position and rotation of the tube again, because it kind of follows the cube. Tweak it a bit more. Here we go. The tube pushes the cube with a cylinder on top. Of course, the floppy cylinder needs to react as well. We set a keyframe for the path at the moment of the hit and delete the one right next to it. First, it'll bend to the right. We adjust the bending by dragging the handles with the convert vertex tool. Then seven frames later, it'll bend to the left. Ten more frames later, it'll bend to the right again. Let's take a look. Adjusting the keyframes a little bit, adding one more bend to the left and copy and paste the keyframe with the original form. Adjusting the keyframes a little more. So far so good. Let's get back to the bow. After hitting the wall, the bow hits the ground again a few frames later. It'll bounce back up and land on the ground again after 6 frames. And so on. The distances are getting smaller and the space between the keyframes as well. Before it comes to a standstill. After setting the keyframes, we need to adjust the motion path and form these curves by dragging the handles. You can see the curves are getting smaller. And in the end, the bowl rolls out. Nice. Let's add another bowl inside the big bowl. We copy the layer, then delete all keyframes and parent it to the layer below. Now we adjust the size to maybe 100 pixels. Let's set the first position. It's aligning with the top of the bowl. In the moment the bowl hits the tube, the small bowl will hit the bottom of the big bowl. By the way, let's give it a different color to make it visible. Great. Let's jump to the next keyframe of the big bowl. Now the small bowl is hitting the right upper side. Make sure to keep the motion path linear by clicking on the point with the Convert Vertex tool. Next, it will hit the left side. After that, the lower right side. But now by rolling over along the edge. Therefore, we grab the handle of the motion path and give it a round form. Adjust it a little to make sure it rolls along the edge. After that, it is jumping to the left side one more time. From now on, we keep on rolling back and forth, but slowly rolling out. Okay, let's have a look. There's quite some friction going on inside the bowl, love it! 
That's basically how I animate graphic shapes and give them some character and a natural behavior without using any plugins. Thanks so much for watching guys, I hope that was helpful. If you have any kind of questions, let me know in the comments below. Please give it a thumbs up, subscribe and hit that notification bell and you all know that sharing is caring. I'd love to know how that tutorial inspired your work. Add the link in the comments below or tag me on Instagram. See you all next time, bye!